Hello all you bladers, and this is Lubi Shirosagi Full History. Lubi Shirosagi was an amazing character. He still is to this day. He was the first Beyblade Burst antagonist, the first Beyblade Burst left spinning blader, and he has that iconic blue hair that reminds us of Hades from that old Hercules cartoon movie that was bad. So, Starting with his introduction in the dual layer days, back when there was no plot armor, there was amazing protagonists like Vaults, Rantaro was there, you know, all that good stuff. You know, Shu wasn't evil, we didn't have to wait till the end of the season to see Shu. And then Louie arrives on this just fantastic looking cruise, introduced as the fiercest of the Supreme Four, winning four national tournaments in a row and other stuff that I don't really remember. So, he flips off of the boats. Volt and Rantaro are kind of just there battling out in real-life size Beyblade costumes in a real-life size, like, human size Beyblade stadium. And then Volt falls out, so Louie kind of just jumps on him. And then Volt's like, whoa, this dude can fly? Whoa, whoa. And then, yeah. So, Louie is kind of just sitting on the stage acting all cocky. And then Volt's challenges or Zach asks Louie if he wants to try the new Cyclone Stadium out and then Louie's like, eh, these guys aren't worth my time. They're they're not they're they're unworthy. They're they're unworthy. And then yeah, he he kind of just sees Shu and the rest of the Supreme Four. The four argue about who's stronger, you know, they all they they like their eyes kind of like light up in fire of their like base spirit colors and then like zoom in and it's super cool. It's super cool. And then Shu and, Shu and Louie grasp hands, and then, like, Louie's like, I'm guessing you've gotten stronger since our last battle. And then Shu's like, you guessed right. It's just super cool. I just, I just love the dual layer season. So much nostalgia. Yeah, and then that's uh, basically it for Louie. Well, not, it's not it, but, you know, for that, you're, for that part of the episode. And then he later shows up at the end of the Battle of Rideout against Begoma Academy Bay Club. They kind of explain how Louis spent a lot of his time out on the seas. He didn't really make a lot of friends, and then that really um, shaped his harsh personality. He moved to school with Gabe, and then everyone thought he looked angry all the time, but Gabe just thought he was lost in his own world. Gabe started practicing with Guyanon a lot, and Louis was there to watch him. One day, when he saw that Gabe and Guyanon were strong enough, Louis challenged him to a battle. Gabe thought he was joking at first and that he was just an amateur, but uh, Louis showed him wrong. Louis proved him wrong by winning four national tournaments in a row, and that's basically what brought him to where he is. And then they kind of also get a flashback of how Louis kind of like knocked Spryzen into Shu's eye, and that's how he got the scar. They don't actually show Spryzen hitting Shu's eye, they just th show the aftermatch of the stadium kind of like crumbling a little bit, and Shu picking up Spryzen and grasping his scar. And then there was four rounds where Vault and Louie were just going head-to-head. -head. Louie burst Vault, then Louie knocked out Vault, then Vault got lucky by the timing of his flash launch, and they got a simultaneous knockout, and that was the first battle ever. I mean ever, like in the entire history that Louie had ever lost. He, I'm pretty sure he'd beaten every single opponent he went up against by burst finish up until that point where he actually got a ring out. He didn't get a burst. And then this guy also makes him get a simultaneous ring out finish. That's the first ever draw ever in the history of Louis' blading history. Like, ever. And that really got him angry. And then he just, he showed Vault his power and poof. Vault goes bye-bye. And then there's the national tournament where Louis is just kind of beating these bladers you know, just beating them up, moving up. Volt's getting more scared of facing him. And then in the semifinals, we get this epic match of Shu versus Louie. Everyone's sure that Shu's going to win with his new Crux boost, where he pulls the first burst on Longinus ever. That's the first time Louie actually lost a point. He actually lost a point. That, that doesn't seem like a big deal, but it is. It is. Louie is a legend, and for him to lose by a burst was just very frustrating to him. But he doesn't seem that bothered by it because he actually expected that from Shu. But he gets a little bit cocky and he was supposed to get a burst in the second round to tie it up, but he kind of got cocky, overconfident, and he just, he didn't get a burst. And then in the, fi in the final round, they kind of just go at it. And then 
it looks like Shu's gonna finish it off with a spin finish, but no. You see, before the fi before the semifinals, Shu and Wakia were facing, and then Wakia was fighting so hard against Shu, despite Shu beating him 3-1. In the final round where Shu burst him, Wakia was fighting so hard that he actually cracked Shu's bay, the, the blade of it. And then Louis was for forcing Spryzen so hard that it actually cracked Spryzen near the end. And that just really got Shu angry. And then Louis, basically same thing happened to Vault. In the picture here, you can kind of see Spryzen breaking. And then against Vault, basically the same thing happened. Except in the first round, Louis burst Vault. Second round, Vault burst Louis. And then in the third round, Vault tripped over a crack in the stadium. And then he lost. And everyone remembers that moment to this day. Yeah. It's just, it's sad. And then, yeah, basically, they don't show Louis for a while. And then after that, his first appearance in God is where, in the finals of the team tournament, where Raging Bulls are against BC Soul, he kind of shows up, and then after Vault beats Joshua, he's like, is that all you can bring to the table? And then they show the iconic music, and then Free kind of flares up, Luby kind of flares up, and then, you know, he just shows, you know. And then he's kind of excited to see Free and Free go up, but then after they show that Joshua's going up, he just kind of leaves, you know. He's, he's, he's just, you know, Joshua's not worthy. He's unworthy. And then, yeah, and then they kind of, like, Red Eye's going on this phase, and then Louie's like, Yo, Red Eye, you think you're so tough? Come at me, bro. You don't scare me. And then he he, he shows Red Eye that he, he doesn't scare him. And he cracks his mask. He pretty much bursts his bay. And, uh, yeah. Red Eye got destroyed. And, uh, yeah, Louis is just really mean. And then Vault is kind of like, I'm gonna take revenge for Shu. And then he loses too. And then, uh, basically same thing happens in the national tournament with God. Except in the semifinals, Shu and Louis meet once again. This time, however, things change. You see, Shu has surprise in Requiem. Requiem, I think by definition, I've searched this up before, but Requiem basically means a grave of dead people or something like that. It either means destroyer or grave of dead people. And that explains a lot. That explains a lot. And he pulverizes Longinus. He just, he pulverizes it. He slams it. He, like, he just slams it. And then also, another side thing in God is that his rival, Louis, and Free's rivalry is also intense. And Free also beat Louis. So in God, there's more competition because Shu's gotten stronger. And then Free kind of shows his face. So Louis's gotten a bit, a little, a little bit intimidated. His ranking's kind of gotten down. You know, he's still one of the most powerful bladers in the world. Don't get me wrong. He's just... You know, he's not as hype as he was. And then God was basically the last good thing for him because, as you can see in the bottom sections, there's just the three main battles he played, the three main roles he played in Sparking, Turbo, and Dynamite Battle. He wasn't even in GT, which kind of sucks. So, yeah, on the Turbo, in the bottom left box, you can see Achilles and Br Brutal Luminar going head-to-head. -head. Basically, in Turbo... Uh, Wonder Valtriac and Luminar show up for a match, just to get, you kind of show that Vault is like got his groove on. You know he's a champion. He can get himself out of a t out of a sticky situation, and then the stadium cracks because Vault and Louis are so powerful that it's two to two in the final round. The stadium cracks, and then Louis destroys Fornius, Rocktivore, and Achilles in a three v one matchup. He creates this tournament where the winner gets to face him and hopefully win, but he doesn't doubt it. He doesn't He doesn't not doubt it. He doesn't think anyone's going to beat him. And then Iger, which mainly because of plot armor, beats him. And then that's basically it for him and Turbo. I guess he showed us, shows up one more time where Fi challenges Vault, and then he's like, no one's allowed to beat Vault but me. And then in Super King, he shows up with Rage Longinus, and Lane's building up this kind of flair. And then he's thinking, like, he's unbeatable, you know, blading's only about winning. So Shu, after Lane beats Free, because he had guys Fafnir, uh, he he battles him against Louis, because he's th he thinks that Louis, oh, Louis has a Super King Bay, so maybe because Louis has a Super King Bay is um, also, like, 
Lucifer, because Lucifer is also a super king, maybe he'll lose. And see that blading is also fun if you lose. But, uh, nope. Nope, he beats Louis. And this time it is because of... Well, it's it's partly because of plot armor, but not as much as it was with Iger. You see, oh, I forgot about GT. Actually, we don't talk about GT. GT is a sin. Louis didn't even appear. He got replaced by this poser, Loden. It's just, no, we don't talk about that. And then he basically just, you know, I guess he almost pushes Lane out, but Lane uses Variant Wall and Burst Louis. I mean, Variant Wall is a defensive technique, so... It would make sense if he exhausted Lane's or uh, Longinus's stamina, or maybe like counterattacked and knocked him out. But burst, that's that part is the plot armor. And then yeah, basically he just he's um, throughout sparking, he's kind of just showcased as a powerful blader. Nothing really more than that. I guess he faces off against Free and Vault one time in a tag team, as well as Shu. That kind of ties back to his old rivals, and then he. He teams up with Drum a lot because him and Drum were kind of teamed up by like by uh, coincidence and then he and Drum become pretty good friends. So now I guess Drum's his bestie because he has no other friends now. And then in Dynamite Battle, he basically just shows up once. Kind of like how he battled against Red Eye. He's kind of like that because Belial just got his bay, I guess. Or he like he challenges the world to see how powerful he is. Or he challenges all the world's bladers to come and fight him. And then like Louie did with Red Eye, he's like, I'm coming at you. And then he comes and uh, he's almost close to beating Belial. But because Belial already has a dynamite battle bay and he's already an established blader, he stands a good chance. And because he's in low mode, Louie can't attack him from above because he's lower and Louie's above. And he's using an upper attack. So he hits Louie from below and bursts him. Now, again, it should have been a ring out because it was just hitting him from underneath. So maybe, like, send him upward and then ring out. But burst? No. Just just no. He was using Raging Upper. Belial was using Dynamite Bomber. And if Belial had the advantage because of the height, it should have been a ring out. It's not that Raging Upper is weak because it's not. So, yeah, that's basically it. I do... I am disappointed with how they handle his character after God, but that's why we that's why I rewatch God and Dual Layer so much and that's why I do these videos to kind of just, you know, remember how the characters used to be, especially the bad ones today or how they mistreated him. So yeah, I am thinking of doing this with Volt and Shu next, seeing as I already did it with Free and Louie. This is Speculation Saturday after all. I don't just have to do like what if he or, he or he don't didn't blade or what if uh blah 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 or full history i can also just talk about stuff i think next week i'll do beyblade random stop so random thoughts or um i guess i'll title it bay chat or basically i just talk about random bay stuff like why do the anime characters have so much muscles they're 12 year olds and they're like beefed up so that'll be cool to talk about next saturday um So yeah, subscribe if you enjoyed, have fun, peace out, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and uh, don't forget to keep on blading.